Our Board of Governors and our staff, we're thrilled to have all of you with us this evening. Um, this is a, a, a conversation for and about performing arts spaces in a possible new venue. So put your imagination hats on. Um, I think as many of you I can tell know the, the uh, mask policy in Fairfax County facilities changed over the weekend. So um, if you're comfortable without a mask, you're fine to go without a mask. If you prefer to have one on, you're welcome to keep one on. It's entirely up to you. But the good news is that that means that the criteria for public health in Fairfax County are in a good place. So we're very happy to have all of you here with us. We invite you to help yourselves to whatever nosh you want and enjoy yourselves this evening. And I'm gonna turn this over to our great consulting team from Grimm and Parker. I'm also gonna thank our colleagues at the Department of Public Works and Environmental Services, EPWES is in charge of all capital facility planning for Fairfax County government. So working with them and with Raymond Parker, we're thrilled to be involved in this engagement process and to hear from all of you. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Lila. Welcome everyone. Who here was, who, jo who here joined us two weeks ago on Valentine's Day? We had a kickoff, Just, okay. So a few more than we expected, that's great. Okay, um, we do have some of the slides of the intro to share with you, but we really just wanna get into the focus group session of the performing arts part of the project. So that's our main goal. Um, as Lila mentioned, uh, well, I'm Amy Upton with Grumman Parker Architects, and I'm joined by Sue Haynes from Grumman Parker Architects and Julia Pryor, and we're a consulting uh, firm we're an architecture firm based out of Tyson's and uh, Calverton, Maryland and Charlottesville. And we do a lot of work in Fairfax County and we're here for the feasibility study. Um, just really trying to listen, from all, or listen to all of you, learn about what you want to see in this um, facility, uh, filter all that information and make sure that we can turn it into a feasibility study. Um, so uh, project overview, we're just gonna do a few minutes of that and then we'll really, the, the chunk of our time today is for the performing arts discussion and then we'll just spend a few minutes at the end, um, right before eight o'clock to wrap up and talk about next steps. Um, we have an hour and a half with all of you so we wanna really use a lot of that time for discussion. And we will be responsible of your time and try to get you out of here at eight o'clock. Um, so just a reminder, if you were here, Last time these first slides may look familiar to you, but if you weren't here, uh, we really wanna hear from all of you to understand what the community needs and wants in this proposed arts venue for the Ruston Town Center. Um, Block J is highlighted in orange there. That is the, uh, the, the site of this proposed uh, Ruston Arts Center, and it's as a part of a proffer that is uh, being negotiated with Boston Properties in the next phase of this Reston Town Center. Um, the proffer would provide an approximately 60,000 gross square foot facility and uh, the goal is to house a stage suitable for large scale music and dance performances and other arts related amenities. Um, the, the main goal that the county and RCC uh, has here is to maximize the ability of this project and meet the goals of One Fairfax and the countywide strategic plan. And um, uh, of course, the, uh, always the, the, the main highlighted goal is to result in a facility that will serve everyone equitably and with high quality. Um, so because this will uh, you know, be a public project and they wanna maximize usefulness and activation of all capital projects undertaken on behalf of the public. So good use of, of all stakeholder funds. We want to make sure that everyone understands that the RCC uh, will not raise a small District 5 tax rate to accomplish this project, and the county will seek partners for funding for the capital project. Uh, this is, we're going to remind everyone of this a few times throughout the presentation, but there's a, an email here, rccontact at fairfaxcounty.gov, and if you have any feedback or questions that we're not going to capture tonight, please feel free to email that. And we also are not planning on spending any time tonight talking about discussion about off, 
uh, opposition to the project itself. We really want to hear from you about um, your needs and your hopes and your your wants for the performing arts part of this project. And so that's that's our main goal tonight. So two weeks ago on Valentine's Day night, we had the the pleasure of spending a lot of time with about 50 uh, people in the community and we talked some big picture questions about the facility as a whole. You know, what would make the project a success to you? What kind of spaces should the new art center include? Uh, types of art events, activities, or programs that you'd like to see offered in this possible new venue? We heard amazing things. Um, very nitty gritty detail oriented items. We heard some big sort of BHAG goal items, um, everything about visual arts, about performing arts, about community spaces, about uh, educational opportunities and outreach. Uh, always, you know, some great ideas about how to make the, the project equitable and accessible and uh, respond to the diverse needs of the community. So um, we really appreciate that. We've been collecting all of this information. Uh, you know, we recorded it with little colored post-it notes as people were, um, volunteering the information and then we've you know we're keeping a list of all of that and it's it's great it's going to really inform some guiding principles for the programming phase of this feasibility study so that is a very quick overview of the process um, and our plan is really this is uh, just there will be other opportunities to talk about the visual arts portion that's actually the next uh, focus group in two weeks will be about visual arts, today we're really focusing more on the performing education. arts. And then the education and, and, the and outreach will be uh, two weeks after that. We have a whole schedule we'll show you at the end. But today our focus again is performing arts. And um, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Sue. Okay. Um, hi, um, oh, hi, I'm Sue Haynes with Urban Park Architects. Um, yeah, our goal tonight is to understand um, your needs for performing arts. We have eight total questions we want to run through. We want it to be more of a discussion. Um, we have a couple polls mixed in there, um, but we really want to be able to take this information and turn it into a space program for our feasibility study. And the idea is to prioritize some of our ideas because not everything's gonna fit, right? There's gonna be visual arts needs and educational needs, so we need to, at the end of the day, be able to prioritize um, what's the most important stuff. Um, these are the questions we're going to go through. I'm not going to read them all now, but we're going to dig sort of from big picture down into nitty gritty things like how many dressing rooms you think you need and, and things like that. Um, we're going to first start with a poll. Do you guys remember we did this last time? Um, you can either use your cell phone and you have to actually type in that address. You can't just Google it. Or you can use one of these super easy clickers that we can hand you and you don't have to use a cell phone at all. Um, so it helps us if you need it real quick. Yep. 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 We have a. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, the surrounding areas has opt oh, so there are options for small to medium flexible spaces for rental, but what seems to be missing is a space designed specifically for performance use with professional technical support, a, a large stage, and related supports, and then the seating capacity, something we want to talk about today a little bit, from 300 to 700 seats is kind of the range that the study had said. Um, realizing the site's only so big, you want to put the right size performance venue there to kind of right size the whole economics of the, of the center. Um, so we know the area can support it. We also know that some other things are missing some smaller intimate venues designed for spoken word, comedy, jazz, and other small groups. Um, you might tell us there's other things missing and we're happy to hear that. Um, we also know it's hard to find quality personal space. That's what was also in those previous polls. And these were from years ago. Today might, might be a little bit different, so we're happy to listen to that. Um, okay, poll question number one, and this is to just help us prioritize to understand how to design the space, we need to understand what's going to happen on in in the performance venue, right? So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just, clearly, we didn't practice <laughs> the the poll part of this too much. But for anyone that just came in, uh, sorry to go back and forth. Um, we have clickers. If you'd like to use a clicker, or if you want to use your own cell phone, you just type in the address www ttpoll.com and it will prompt you for a session ID, rack meet, just R-A-C-M-E-E-T. It's not case sensitive. But if you don't want to use your own cell phone, you can just use one of our clickers and we're happy to hand them out. Um, okay, so, sorry, we're coming, sorry. So now for poll question one, and we'll, we'll give everyone some time here. Already four people have responded, which is great. Um, uh, we want to just, Three. Three. Wait one second. By accident, here. we just we we canceled. We closed yes. it. Let me just start it over again. Hold on. <laughs> sorry. I was already the I know. I know. Sorry. And if you put in three on your clicker, it won't really show it. It'll just just do the the three different ones you want to put in. Okay. Let me go back to this. Okay. So yeah. we're gonna start the polling. Here we go. Okay. So, in which program types, programs or types of performances are you most interested? And we're saying you can choose up to three. If you're using the clicker, it, you just hit three different buttons, and it's either you know A, one. It it doesn't like tell you. It doesn't turn green or anything that it's done. Just click three things. Either musical is A, B is choral, C is orchestra, D theater. E, dance, F, Broadway shows, G, we put comedy and improv together just because we we're limited to 10 things, uh, H, cinema, uh, that could be any type of digital arts really, I, folk or traditional, and J, other. So feel free, we have about 31 responses, which is fantastic. You guys are like the most sophisticated audience these last two times that we've, we've done this with our own staff and people are Scrambling, so uh, this is fantastic. Yes, do you have a question? Sorry, what was the session ID? It's R A C M E E T. That's RAC Meet. It stands for Rest and Arts Center Meeting, but R A C M E E T. Yes. Your category F Broadway shows. That are you kind like touring Broadway shows for a time? So the question was for F Broadway shows. Are we asking about touring Broadway shows? Yes. Um, any kind of touring Broadway shows or, or maybe a, a um, showing, like a local show, a community showing of a show that would be on Broadway, but, right. um, but for now we can just say yes, a touring Broadway show for these events. Okay. okay, so the question was what is folk or traditional? Um, we're thinking this could be like a, any type of folk performances, uh, traditional probably we could have ignored that word, but uh, I don't know. The thing that comes to my mind is like uh, traditional Irish dance, like Shanos or something. That's just because my daughter used to do that. Or um, I don't know, a Batala, like the Brazilian drumming, or um, some sort of uh, flamenco dancing. I, I, I'm just making these up. Okay, so we're, we have 31 responses. It, it hasn't really nudged. Uh, we're going to close the polling here and just see the results. Okay. 
So this was a, a way for us to try to get preference in addition to you know, some sort of feedback. Okay. Interesting. I think that's interesting. If you're going to go to the movies, you're going to go to the movies, right? <laughs> Category question again? Yeah. Music, um, a, musical. Are you talking like show musicals or dance or band musicals? Because they're completely different things. Yeah, I would say band. I would say orchestra. Musical. Yeah. Orchestra. Yeah. Orchestra. Yeah. Orchestra. Yeah. Orchestra. Musical. With, or with orchestra. Don't worry. Don't stress. This is just a general category. We're going to get into more detail. Our life is. Oh, yeah. What was the 1% other? Anybody want to volunteer other? Volunteer their other? So we can put that in. Is that other? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. facility for multiple venues or is there only an option to do one performance venue? Well I believe based on the size of the site that there and the economics of the whole project that there's um, there'll be one larger medium sized venue. There's options for smaller um, call it a rehearsal venue or a or a visual arts venue or maybe a small club that could double as the lobby. So um, I don't think we're going to get two large to medium sized venues on the oh, site. Yeah, right. Not necessarily we need the large one. I, I just, black box and flexible are two different things to those okay. of us who work at theater. Right. So, if flexible space, I mean, it, 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 so which one are you talking about? Is um, Call it a black box. It's, it's our understanding from the previous um, market studies that there's a lot of black boxes and a lot of flexible spaces uh, available around here and that's actually and tell me that if that's wrong that's that okay that's what the study said um, so I guess if your question is can we have a proscenium theater and a black box that's where you're heading okay okay a lot of that I think that's something we can put on the table right um, and we can research that there's different size black boxes and different needs um, for that. So that's awesome input to talk about. It's perhaps the black box doubles as something else and it's not, you know, dedicated to that. And it's also a rehearsal space or whatever. So I'm, I'm trying to gather what you're getting at. Um, so is there any more criticism about the proscenium shape theater with a potential fly tower? Does that sound like that's what the need is for the main, we'll call it the main venue, right? Um, so we're gonna keep going to kind of size, right size it, so we can uh, get in the right range. Um, okay, so this has to do with the needs of the actual stage, assuming it's a proscenium stage, right? Um, we're assuming there's orchestra needs, Choral needs, dance wing needs, um, theater needs. Obviously, there'd be a screen for cinema, 
speaker is pretty much a multi-purpose stage, but sometimes when it's too multi-purpose, it doesn't work for everybody, right? So if it has a fly, the orchestra will need its own shell, and that's assumed that that would be part of the design of the stage. Um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about what expectations you would have for the stage itself? Thank you. I'm Susan Meeks, Beersteek with the Rest and Corral. We're looking for a large stage that can accommodate a large chorus and a large orchestra. Can you quantify what you mean by large? Uh, combined about 200 people, 200 so break, break to it. 250 people can, on stage. Can you break it into two parts? Uh, let's say 130 people in the chorus on risers, seated risers, and 70 people in the orchestra. This would be for something like Carmina Virana, Beethoven Ninth, where you have to have, you know, both ensembles large. And how often would you perform something like that? Um, potentially annually. annually. Mm -hmm. So can I ask another question? Sure. Um, are there other scale performances that you do more often at a smaller scale um, that would also want to be accommodated? We we can do uh, we often do I mean now because right we're limited in space um, we often do chorus only with piano or a small orchestra small wind ensemble so you still have the hundred and thirty choral members then we have about eighty choral members okay so there's because we often we're looking at this as a potential place for collaborating with multiple ensembles. Maybe two choruses working together with oh. an orchestra. Oh, got it. Okay. So in the other version, there's 80 choral mm -hmm. members. And then what size um, orchestra do you have? Um, it can be anywhere between 10 and 35, 40. You got that No, I was just thinking that that 80 number, probably we should you know, plan more like 90 or 100. That's true. I mean, that's, that's, true. that's the real normal number. COVID and where do you typically perform right now? Right yeah. now? Right here okay. and when we're doing classical performances, we have to go to McLean uh, to the St. Luke Catholic Church in McLean because of their acoustics and their capacity and their organ. Awesome. Okay. I think that's super, super that, those are the kind of things we're trying to get at. If other folks have similar criteria, that would be awesome. Right. And we could we originally, when it was a smaller group, um, closer to 6.30, we thought we'd go around the room and sort of just literally ask every single person to, uh, you know, input something here. Since we have so many different things on the on the board here, if you see something that, you know, if you're not part of the choral, if you, if you want to talk about dance. musical or dance or cinema, um, and you want to give us some ideas about uh, those things, please, we would love to hear that. Um, I, many places accommodate, including the Kennedy Center, accommodate the very large chorus and orchestra by going out into the audience and having a stage extension. So the stage is still usable for a smaller group, and you don't cut into your capacity all the time. That's but what I was asking. You yeah. do have that. So, so if we had like a thrust on the front of the stage, it would have to be something that you could, for it to work, you have to be able to. I, I mean. At the Kennedy Center, we just have to have a stage extension that goes right over the seats. Yeah. Um, and it can go out as far as seven or eight rows or just two or three. But it does mean that you up your capacity for the stage without ruining the stage for the smaller events, which is the primary use of it. Exactly, you know, so. exactly, exactly. So you can, you can show the venue set up in different arrangements. Correct. Um, oh, great. Thank you. Hi, Sushant with the Gin Dance Company. Um, how about, uh, for, for, for our company, we often use projection. Oh, awesome. Okay, so the projection that um, we need to the, be able to, put a site. you know, yeah, put, put it on the site and it's big enough to cover the whole site. Yeah. That was kind of the, uh, a little challenging at the beginning with the, you know, okay. some other yeah, some other theaters. You want the full, full right. site? Got it. Yes, and yes, that, that would be, you know. Um, and what size dance company is that? Oh, our company is 10, 10 dancers. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, and then, I mean, the stage would already have wings for dance, so it would be fine the yes. way that we're imagining it. Okay. Right. Um, and then 
the, the fly system? Yeah. Okay, great. We're gonna get into the fly in a little bit. Okay. Um, so okay. <laughs> what about other orchestra uh, folks? Well, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, you've got in there a priority um, accommodations pit, not a full orchestra pit. I'm not sure what that means. What it means is that we're not sure the, the, the project can afford a pit that sinks all the way down and under. I'm sorry, it goes all the way down and under. It depends if there's really a basement in the design or not. Um, it might be that the pit just goes down and the players are still in the front, they're just not in the sight lines. Um, so maybe you should just explain the need for the orchestra pit and we can evaluate. Okay, let's just say you need an orchestra pit that can hold easily two dozen people. It's gotta be movable, it's gotta play at a lower, you know, below right. auditorium floor level. It's gotta come up to auditorium floor level so you can put seats on it. Right. And it's gotta come up to stage level so you can expand your apron. Right, right, right. that's the idea, is that it's a, it's a thrust, it's at stage level for seats and then it goes down and becomes a pit, but not a pit that goes under. Well, it's not Radio City Music Hall, no. Right, that's, that's, that's what that note is about. Well, I don't know what people think, right? So. It, um, Okay, I think I think that's that would make sense because it's not hard to accommodate those things in the budget. Oh, there's another mic. Sorry, there's another mic. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm Naomi from Conservatory Valley. I would say um, if the stage could have a sprung floor or yeah. access to Marley put yeah. down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would assume that's a given, right? Okay, good point. Sorry. Uh, we're talking all kinds of this. Karen Thoman with Encore Corral of Reston. Talking all kinds of stage extenders and so forth for capacity. What kind of audience size capacity are we talking here? Did I hear the number 700 earlier? No, we're going to get to that. Okay. The range was 300 to 700. Oh, that's right. the range. Right. Okay. We're narrowing probably, we're going to get to that in a couple minutes. Probably around 500 is what we're thinking. Okay. Um, and if, if we're done with this category, it's probably coming up soon. Thanks. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, Kate Cutter with the rest of the community players. I'm speaking on behalf of theatrical um, organizations. Um, we, um, we're we one of the larger theatrical organizations in our little corner of the world. Um, what we would be looking for is um, uh, stage space, we typically accommodate anywhere from two to 24, 25 performers on stage. We'd be looking for um, adequate wing space. Um, our challenge um, is uh, with a stage space that is too large, it becomes financially incompatible um, with our ability to build sets, um, paint drops, bring in enough things to put on the stage to fill it um, to create um, an effective production. Um, so we, um, that is our one concern with a large space. Um, being one of the larger groups, if the space becomes too large, um, then it would become non-feasible for us to use and most likely most smaller theatrical organizations. Yeah, interesting, good point. I mean, and that sort of sets the proscenium width and height to kind of Work with that. So, um, so uh, Reston Community Orchestra agrees with what's been said. I think we're somewhere in between there because uh, the current stage, the other side of this building here, is too small for us and probably too small for the rest of the community players, I would say. And, you know, well, we too would like to see something Reston Corral just uh, mentioned that's, you know, a very large space like that. Uh, we, we definitely need to have something bigger than what we have here. Uh, we have some drawings that show Somewhere between here. what I think we've been talking about is ideal and obviously there's an extension, so we, we, we could definitely fit with what has been discussed here. Uh, Perfect, that's good. We have a, a drawing in a second that's gonna show your stage size with larger, slightly larger ones. My, my concern with, uh, with choruses and orchestral performances, and probably even theater, is if a theater with fly space means that there needs to also be some forethought about a shell right. that projects the sound right. and keeps it from getting right. lost at right. night. Right, so you almost have to buy the shell and the, and the uh, reflectors that go with the shell for any orchestra 
Great. This is good. I mean, I know we're, we're still piecing it together. There's more coming up. Don't worry. In terms of the size of the preceding march, I recommend 35 by 25. Not to be too specific here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, let me keep going here. And we need to make sure there's adequate wing space. Right. Because in all of the performing venues in this area, they are sad with lacking in that. And if anyone has dreams of doing opera or Broadway musicals, you need to have wing space that is the size of your stage. Right. So just as, a, just as an overall gauge, and we're not going to lock in numbers today, um, the drawing on the left is the um, performance venue right here, center stage which is about 34 by 60. Um, the drawing in the middle is kind of a little bit larger, but really kind of makes a big difference to go from 34 to 40 to 81. It doesn't show the wings and stuff in there, but you get the idea. Um, the one all the way to the right might be a little too large based on some of your descriptions. Um, and that's like what they have at Capital One Hall, which is for 1,600 seats, which is really not not the right proportions for what you need, um, and where you really want to—you really want to think about where to put your money, and you want to right size everything so that people can come and afford to, you know, use the space and not overbuild, right? So we're we're currently kind of thinking somewhere in this mid-range um, drawing. I don't know if there's—I know you guys already talked a little bit about sizes. Um, what's what's your feel for that? It definitely has to be bigger than the center stage. Right. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like, you know, uh, but I don't think it has to be all the way on uh, Capital One stage size. Uh, <laughs> I think when you're talking about the stage, I think you do need a very large stage. Um, you can always use drops or curtains or something to minimize the space, but you're not going to be able to add to it once it's built. Right, but the, if you notice the difference between Capital One and the other one, it's really just more wing space. The question is, is at what point do you need the extra wing space, right? Well, okay. you know. I think you do need the, the extra wing space. Go ahead. I'm not clear on the proscenium opening width. I'm not sure what the dimensions are exactly. That you're for. We didn't. This isn't defining the actual. But this this drawing in the middle has a 36 foot wide proscenium. I don't know if you can read that. That's 36 feet wide. Does that help you? 36. So then the wing space. Fourteen seven on each side. Just clarify when you say the stage is forty by eighty one. Yeah, thirty six is a presidium. Right. So that leaves that leaves pretty much twenty feet, um, twenty foot wings. If I'm doing my math right, which is pretty large. Yes. But is that too large? No. No, I don't think there's two. I don't think it's. it's I, and I agree, you could do the one all the way to the right, but the question is. Where do you want to put your energy? And imagine you've got a pot yeah, of money and you really safe. want to spend it right. So, <laughs> and you know, the, we haven't even gotten into the actual house yet, right? <laughs> well, when you're designing those dimensions, you really need to look at exactly what's on the walls. For example, in the center line, the, the center stage, you've got your lock rail on the stage right side, and that sets up a whole lot of off-stage space. Okay, yeah. So you've got to account for that when you're designing how much wing space you really have. Yeah. And you can see how tight the wings are in the center uh -huh. stage, you know. Um, okay, so I think, and this, you know, this is needed in a conversation about the thrust. You can see this, you know, you can see that there, and you could add a thrust there for the kind of choral with orchestra option that we were talking about earlier, right? Does that make sense? Go ahead. Clarify the center stage. Can you clarify the center stage because if if those are to scale, are they to scale? Yes. Then so in that with each that other though? stage, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go ahead. I mean, center stage accommodates, I think, thirty-five people on the stage. 
That, I believe that's the max. The answer from the okay. side is 50. Okay. Um, so you really need a substantially larger stage than center stage. Well, I don't know. I don't know where the 50 comes from. If it, that's the fire marshal's Right. So there's a difference between what the fire marshal says you can have and what you could really do. Right, put that you could put one in. Well, no, no, I'm sorry, I don't mean it. I don't mean it here. I mean it in the new building. In the new building, you can design it for a larger occupancy if you have all the right exits, right? Yes. So I don't think, I don't think we would be limited to that number. So on. I guess what what Sue's saying is that this the occupancy on the stage is also factors in the occupancy of the house and the exits. Yeah, it's all about the yeah. exiting. Yeah. You might have some issues here with exiting that requires that reduces you to 50. I don't know. I don't know. Let's not get into that. But, no, but the point is, the point to get back on track is how many people do you want to put on the stage? Okay, right. then. Yeah. Well, we already yeah. talked a little bit about chorus and orchestra, and that's clearly more than 50 people. And I think that could be, you know, it's and theatrical of two to 24 performers from yeah. the, the one group. So. But I think if you had the right exit, you can clearly occupy that stage with more than. 200 people on that stage. No, that's, I, I would not say not that. Not yours, not yours. So we don't have to have this discussion now. Right. The point here is we want to have capacity for large choruses and orchestras. Got it, right. And whether or not it looks that way from these pictures is the point. The right. point is we're going to design it for the amount of people we're going to put on the stage. Right, exactly. Do you want to just repeat that for the, for the video? Because we're this is being recorded. Yeah, the point is we're going to design it for what you said in the first go around about the number of orchestra and choral people and right size it for that. With, you know, with the thrust pushed out, you might have, um, you know, exactly what you're looking for. I think if we're not designing it today, we're just starting the program um, to get some initial beginning to see what fits on the site. Why don't we keep... Okay, now we're into the house itself. Um, based on the earlier marketing study, the house size ranged from 300 to 700. We're calling that 500. Um, we need to think about different considerations, right? It needs to be the right size. It needs to be the right size, perhaps, for union rate criteria. Let's say there's a threshold of 500. We should size it to be 499. If, if there's an issue with that, maybe there's not. Um, we need to make sure that there's equity of access and the rental rates and the calendars managed. Um, and the house should feel full, no matter what performance size is in there, no matter what group is in there. So you don't want to overbuild and people come and it feels like you're playing to an empty house. So we have to be cautious about how we design it. Um, and that suggests, to me, it suggests the balcony because you could fill the orchestra, close the balcony, and it feels great. Um, if you've got 350 seats down here and 150 up there, um, then it's kind of just the right size uh, for 500. That's just me. I'm not trying to throw that out there. But um, And keep in mind the site is limited also. So the footprint um, needs to be condensed, which also raises you to kind of wanting a balcony to, to use that ground floor space for other, other things. You know, ground floor is going to be hot property. Um, for other venues, maybe a cafe, maybe whatever kind of lobby space. Um, so the, the topic has to do with balcony, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Shapes, balcony sizes, overall house. Um, I wanted to raise the issue that was discussed at the first meeting also about the rental rates. Yeah. Um, I'm connected with both the Resident Community Orchestra and the Resident Corral, both nonprofit organizations. It's important that rental rates not be high. And this gets back to the point we discussed about trying to get uh, businesses, particularly in the area where we're going to be, to support right. not only the uh, construction, but the continuing operations so that rental rates 
remain low enough that organizations such as these and many others uh, can have access to that's the That's I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like yeah. the last thing we want to do is build something that's too big that no one can afford to use it. So that's the whole kind of right sizing. Thank you. Um, obviously, there's a million different ways you can shape the hall, um, and you kind of just once you have a proscenium, you're kind of driven towards the shapes on the left side. Um, and this is just a sense of scale. Don't get caught up in the detail of these drawings, but probably <laughs> just like the stage drawing. Um, this is center stage here. Um, 200, 290 seats, uh, no balcony. 260. 260. My bad, 260. Must have read that on the website somewhere. Maybe that was a renovation when you took a girl out. <laughs> now it's 260 with generous rows. <laughs> Um, and the diagram right below it is a similar size venue, but, um, no, I'm sorry. It's got a balcony with 300 seats. So that's why that's two seats. That makes more sense. Um, so the idea is you, you do a sort of footprint, and then once you add the balcony, you can, you can work your way up to a higher, higher capacity. Um, the middle two are in 450, 490 range. The first one has a balcony. The other one has two balconies. Two balconies is a little tricky because if you don't have a three-story building, it's, you're spending a lot of money to go up to the third floor, but that's a, that's a different issue. Um, and the last option is straight up 600 seats on the flat. Um, and that's certainly an option. Um, that option to me feels a little bit like a high school auditorium, and I feel like you want like a performance venue feel, and it's not it's not really what you're looking for. So, guys, I mean, please feel free to talk. Um, so we're kind of leaning towards this middle range of you know 350 seats on the orchestra, 150 maybe on the balcony, cozy, intimate um, feel, won't feel empty if you've got only 300 people in there. Um, Go ahead. Let me get that you guys give some input. Anybody that maybe hasn't spoken yet that would like to chime in on this, of course, you're welcome. I can bring this microphone over. Or Julia has a microphone yep. for that side. Oh, uh, the comment I want to make, it kind of has to do with the uh, occupancy of the stage and the occupancy of the house. If we're talking about having up to 200 musicians on the stage, I worry about the just the acoustics of, uh, of uh, anything less than 700 or probably more seats, just because of the pure need for volume to accommodate that many instruments and voices. So you could offset that with acoustic, you know, um, I'm sorry, absorption and things like that. I think there's ways we've 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 built venues that are 350 seats with full stage. So I think we could overcome that. And there is a question later about acoustics in regards okay. to if we want to have um, unamplified performances or all just amplified. So that kind of leads a little bit to your question because that would shape the hall, right? Um, but that's a great point. Um, any other comments? Yeah, I like the idea of you know splitting up so it doesn't feel too empty if there's a small group there. But last meeting we talked about having like national touring artists and stuff there too. And that's 500 seats is not going to be able to support that. So if we want bigger, so we can kind of put the rest of the theater on the map with bigger acts, or is it just looking at the community? Yeah, that's that's a huge question, right? Like what and what's the capacity? How often would they, would they be? So it's kind of like those are only a couple times a year. Is that you know is that worth it? That's not for us to decide today, but that's a great point. Okay. Are there national touring you know groups that hit 500 seat halls, sure, you know? Not, maybe not the ones you're thinking. I just want to second what he just said. I think that we don't <coughs> want to think small. It, it, yes, we individually as local groups will attract two, 300, 400 ourselves. But when we start collaborating with each other and with other groups that are in our region, which we mentioned people have already outside of this group right here have expressed interest and I think it is important to to make it be able to be operated I don't think we can depend on just ourselves renting it I think we have to think bigger and broader so I would agree with that 
Yeah, I mean, all, those are all great points, and there needs to be some sort of operation study based on, you know, all that to make sure that it's... I, I, yeah, I... Uh, one thing that I kind, of, I kind of thought of after the last meeting, which didn't get discussed at all, was um, the other spaces that we're talking about building here and the other spaces that currently exist and operate and are available for community use in our direct region. And when you look at um, other, other venues, there, I mean, we're right in the middle of, there are three other venues within eight to 15 miles of us that currently support touring companies and large space community use facilities. And I think the, I just think a greater need needs to be looked at as to who is actually gonna use this facility and who it's being built for. Um, and, I, and I do worry that we are going to oversaturate the community with um, too many venues that are too similar and, and don't cater to enough um, of who is looking for space to use. Yeah, it's a, it's a balance, right? I mean, you have to balance the needs of making it affordable for groups to come and then making money. And it's, it's a total balance of different competing interests. And the site, you know, the site's only so big. So, um, I, I understand your comment. I, well, can I just, I'm sorry. I, I, that's a really good point. I think the, if, the ones of us who are represented here, largely, we need it on the weekends. Which to say that we can't have these outside, you know, national touring companies, they come during the week. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think that, that, yeah. No? People go to the Kennedy Center during the middle of the week. That's a good point. I mean, we'll make a note about, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, weekend versus weeknight and, and sharing the space. Maybe we'll keep so, up. Yeah, getting a sense 500 isn't too far off, and maybe if we could go larger, if the site and the econo economics worked. Yeah. Yeah, I think that 490 with one balcony is like excellent. Um, again, just as exactly the numbers that you were talking about 350 on the floor and 150 up top, give or take. I think it's a great way to do it. You can close off the balcony if you don't anticipate those sales. Um, and if you can sell the tickets, you've got that balcony, and I think it's fine. Um, and you don't have, you know, the farthest seat in the balcony is not nearly as far away as, say, um, 490, well, 490 with two balconies or 600 with no balconies. It will feel very intimate. Yeah. It's, it's exactly the size of a similar venue. Mm. Okay, let's, maybe we should keep going. We have a lot more to cover. Sorry. Oh, poll question, Amy. Okay, another poll question. So if you want to oh, abandon your cell phone and you want a clicker and you don't have one, raise your hand. And I know you're going to say you need all these spaces. So, <laughs> all right, if, if you're good on your cell phone, just keep using it. If you need to log in again, it's the session ID is R A C M E E T, or RAC Meet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you need a clicker? No. Oh, good question. Okay. Again, and the question on definitions of rehearsal space. You can have a rehearsal space for the show that's about to open, and they right. just need that, or you need <laughs> rehearsal space for four weeks, okay? Completely different needs and uses. Right. To me, it's a rehearsal space for the group that's going to do the performance during, maybe during the week they're going to use a rehearsal space. Okay. Not right before. But you're right, there's a million different versions of that. And we know you, you're going to say you need all these things. It's really just a way to get everyone's, everyone's input kind of quick. We're not going to... Just in case. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have a question too because in so many of our spaces, um, the green room or the rehearsal space or the dance studio are also our dressing room spaces. So is dressing rooms being considered? Oh, it's coming. It's coming next. I, I just wanted yeah. to clarify yeah, yeah. before right. I. And, and trust me, every space is going to have to do double duty. You know, things are going to have to do double duty. And you're right. The green room is probably can't be uh, left to just a green room. It probably has to do something else. I'm sorry, can you guys see it all? No, just read it. Rehearsal space A, green room B, dance studio C, D, recording studio, E, practice, instructional, and F, digital media film, and other. Yeah, and if um, if something like uh, dressing room, which we're going to capture That's a little later, next. but if you really want it, at, just say other, and we'll talk about it. 26. Oh, okay. 26. Anybody else? Yeah. 
trying to vote and just needs a, another minute. Just quick three things that I up to 20. It's like the end of the day. I can't read this with my eyes. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go poll. We're gonna close the poll. Okay. All right. Oh, so this time, uh, four percent for other. It'd be great to recording studio is sort of low. Digital media film studios is sort of low. Obviously, um, we have good numbers for the rehearsal space, a green room, the practice instructional, and uh, the dance studio. If someone would like to volunteer, maybe what they voted for other, yeah. that'd be great. I, I, I was another. Great. Um, <laughs> there, you need to have some sort of tech space okay. associated with the theater, whether it's used as a shop or some. There needs to be some kind of tech workspace in order for. Right, there's questions about scene shop and uh, costume shop coming up. Also wardrobe? Yeah, there's some questions about scene shop and costume shop. So that's what other is. We're good. I wonder if there's really not digital media and film representation tonight. I just want to be clear. Uh, anybody maybe in, because I mean obviously we want to make sure that we represent that in the new facility. And if there's but no it might just be that no one is yeah. here today. Nobody here. Maybe we'll just, oh there's someone, okay. <laughs> so speak up. <laughs> Not forcing you to talk, but would you like the microphone? Do you want to speak? No, I, I, I just concur with the lady talking about tech. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. There is no, I see nothing about technology. Coming out, coming out. Okay. And that is, I have people who come in, do podcasting, do record, recording is big, very big. Um, and people are not finding that, that facility here. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. And, and about how, how, how many, how many users, like for things like podcasting or other recording shows, I mean, is it, uh, I mean, I imagine it could be everything from someone on stage and it's the whole performance is being live streamed, or is it a smaller group that is recording in a studio? Well, I, I live stream one of my theaters, my music groups. Can everybody hear me okay? No, just, if you could just do okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. better, better. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I have a group that comes in, they're Indian, and they record, they perform, they do um, their music, and then we live stream back to India. Um, we also have a, a Spanish group that come in, and we film and broadcast them. I've got uh, three musicians from the National Pops Orchestra that come in and podcast with me. Um, let me think. Oh, some of the Navy band also come in, uh, the percussionists. So how big is your studio space? Tiny. Tiny, tiny, like, tiny. Give me a dimension, throw a dimension. It's very tiny, trust me. <laughs> um, but it's all, it's necessary. Yeah. I, I, I cannot overemphasize how necessary it is. People, people are desperate to find somewhere with the acoustics. Okay, we used to, we do Friday Night Live in Herndon. And they, all through um, the pandemic, they came in every, we didn't miss a beat. They came into my studio and we live streamed Friday Night Live all the way through pandemic. So I wow. cannot overemphasize the importance of wow. technology for the arts. And it's going, it's going upwards, not going right. backwards. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's possible that there's not fair representation. Yeah. Demographic. I mean, if you want young people to be right. using this this new performing center, yes. performing arts center, you want to attract young people, and I know you do, you have to build this you have in. To attract right. young people. Have to. It's not to. Yeah. <laughs> what I would like to hear later, what size your studio is, just oh, if you can. Oh, <laughs> what size do you want? Yeah. yeah. What size would you want? Yeah, yeah, I'll come and work for you. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for example, if you look at this room that we're in, yeah. we're in a four Is it classroom space? opened up space. So if you imagine the dividers closed, that could be, you know, one classroom about 650 square feet. Is, it, is each of these? I'd say it's like 12 by 20 feet. No, they're more about 400 square feet. 400. Okay, so, so if you're... This is about 1,000 square feet. Right. So, um, and is your studio uh, is your studio a, a, quarter, a quarter of, this? of that size? Mm -hmm. Is it a fourth, a quarter of this? No, it's about this size. Oh, oh, what okay. did I say? It's small. That's tiny. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. See, this is why we asked. I was. I was picturing like a like a closet. So, okay. Good. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. You've asked us to basically make choices here. Um, you've given us 
you talked about a 60,000 square foot facility. Right. Is that the ground floor footprint? It's a total square foot number, and we're not even sure we're even going to get that much. Okay, but the question is, is this like a three-story building or a six-story building? If it's six stories, we can have a wall, right? If it's three, but it, not, it'll never add up to did, 60. Like, you did the expansion at the Maryland Theater in Hagerstown. Right. You went up, right? You got a right. ball room. Right. You got a rehearsal hall in right. there. You got all kinds of stuff. Right. So I don't know what choices. That was 35,000 square feet. Yeah. So <laughs> depending on where we can go with this, yeah. um, you know, I like all of them. And sure. a whole bunch of others. Sure, and we agree. But but keep in mind, you know, the visual arts group isn't here, the education group isn't here, and we can all share spaces. So I think you're right, and that the objective is to see what we can fit in that on that site for the sixty thousand or, or a little bit less. Okay. And just in the other category, things like a production office. So when you're doing performances, dress rehearsals, that sort of thing, um, that you can that has a copier or a computer printer and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think. There would be an assumption for administrative. Maybe we should keep it. Are we running out of time? Or, no, I think we're good. But I, I've been taking notes, and I keep forgetting to look over here. Does anybody over here want to speak up that hasn't? OK. No pressure. All right, let's keep I going. think this is pretty back. close to what we had expected. Now, here's your question. Sorry, adjusting your own scenery. Um, so this is about back of house spaces, and I know you can never have enough back of house spaces. Um, the dressing room category. Later on, we'll talk about sizes um, of potential dressing room. We use the word scenery repair in B because we're not sure a full scene shot is an option, but we can talk about it if people are really gonna build scenery here. Um, and then C, we said costume repair for a similar reason where I wasn't sure we had enough for a full costume shot. Um, loading is obvious, we need loading. Um, and facility storage, you can never get enough of that, but that also comes at a premium. So, um, this is just a priority thing. Don't get hung up on it. I mean, obviously, we'd want all of these, but yeah. we're just trying to, if we had dots it helps and to doors, understand um, from everybody. Access is a given um, uh, for the loading. I think that's all, and performer, assume that's all going to work. Sorry. Yep, 27 responses. Anybody? Okay. Everyone wants loading. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have put it on the list. It's kind of obvious. So let's talk a little bit more about dressing rooms then. Oh, wait, what's the other? Oh, what's the other? Besides access. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm a lover. It's okay. I've worked in too many theaters as part of it. Um, I, I don't. I don't really feel that it, that it this indicates how much space is needed for tech during a performance, right. and that is a huge amount of what the space is needed for. You know, if you have sets, you have to have a place to put all those spaces, and I'm not sure that that's included in this, and that's vital. Right. So uh, can you I mean, explain a little bit more. What do you mean by that? So, if you came in, would you build your sets off site? We wouldn't build them there, we would bring them in. Right, so yes. you build your sets off site. So that's not the priority, but you do need a space to be able to work on your sets. Right. But in in the course of productions, and it's almost any production, you have stuff that is not on stage, but you need for the show. And that includes if you have some of these large orchestra and choral performances, because the stage gets changed to accommodate the piece. You have risers that push in and then go that's off the stage. So there always needs to be that space close to it that accommodates all of those things. Um, and, and that is, that I, I don't feel like that's really yes. represented in the choices. Okay, that's fair. And it could become, you know, the loading zone when it's not loading, you know, like it, it, whatever we have to. Is the booth included in this? Yeah, I think it's assumed we're gonna have, uh, I mean, what? sorry, <laughs> I, we didn't list it. I think the assumption is there's, you know, there's a control booth, there's lighting and, and sound. You know, obviously there's full audiovisual capability to stream, all that. I mean, I don't think you'd build a new theater nowadays without all that equipment. I'm sorry, that's coming up in the next okay. discussion. Um, but I, I like the conversation about scenery. So if most of the scenery is being built off site, that's great because we could have a small shop to fix and repair and maybe house, house it all stacked together before it gets loaded in, you know? Um, same thing with costumes. Any costume, <coughs> large costume issues? Well, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> but you're rolling in. Storage of costume between performances. Right. Uh, depending a lot. That's going to be dependent on dressing rooms and things like that. Right. Um, but lo but load in and preparation and prep for loading out and so on. I mean, wardrobe takes up costumes take up a huge amount of space. So let's talk about dressing rooms for a second, then, since since you're here. Um, we talk about sizes of groups. Do the choral groups come already in their um, their attire? Um, most of the time. Most of the time. So what's the largest group that would need a full dressing room? Dance group, or go ahead. Yeah, what was that? Yeah. 20, 30, how many people? Dance. How many people do you think? Well, there's 80 kids in the dance right there, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm going to say like 110, 120. I don't, but it depends on the production. Okay. So. So that's the kind of thing where you don't want to design for 110 in the dressing room. You have to, you know, use the rehearsal space and put some curtains up and right. kind of make it for, you know, for the Nutcracker or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay. But the typical, if we were to size the permanent dressing rooms, if there was a dressing room for maybe, you know, 10 and 10, and it could kind of get joined together, is that kind of close? Sorry. It, it's, I would say if you want to bring in any kind of outside things at any point, you do need to have a dressing start, room or start. two dressing rooms that can accommodate an artist of, right. I'll say, stature, but you know, right. whatever it is. But yes, the dance student, the dance programs need a huge amount of space. Nutcracker is one of the big depth for here, which is also a possibility. They need that space, and it needs to be somewhere where they can get there fast. Right now, the spaces that dance uses don't have a but they can be big rooms. Um, I, I would say any large room needs to have some division because not all groups want to have everybody in one room. Right. Some want to separate children from adults, right. or men from women. Um, choose where you want to be, but you know um, you do need that capability because different groups require different things. Right. So typically, there's at least one star dressing room, right? right? And then. I would say if you're going to have a multi-purpose, if you're going to have a, a space that is truly multi-purpose, you need to have at least one room that works as a, it could also be a production office sometimes. Exactly. It could also be else. Well, like at, at Maryland Theater, it doubled as like the bride's suite yeah. and they had weddings there. You know, but, but you do need some space that can be a quiet, if you're going to accommodate all these things, you need to have some space that it can accommodate <coughs> a private space, you know. But if I mean, it's hey, twenty, a presidential is, visit, you need to have a space for that. Is twenty a good number for actual dressing? Uh, like, uh, no, I'm talking like perfectly accommodated twenty. You could pack in forty. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like twenty stations. Is that uh, are you talking about actual sit yes. down stations? Yes. yes. You don't need. Well, I know you don't need it. You and don't you need that have, for all of them, and you're not right. building an equity house. You can have a right. You can have mirrors that come in and out depending on the group. right. Dance groups but I think more than filling, you know. Okay. But you do need some makeup table type right. things. Restrooms backstage. Right. Yeah. Um, one at least one immediately like adjacent to the stage. Yes, I know. And plenty of them back in the was, all over the place. I agree. <laughs> all right, let's keep. I might. I think we might need to keep going. Sorry. There's a lot of backstage stuff. Don't worry. I think we'll cover. You know, we'll cover access. We'll cover um, bathrooms. I think that's all understood in the program. And this is um, a little bit about front of house needs. Obviously, we still have to talk to the visual arts people, the education people. But obviously, we need a lobby. Um, we're not convinced that we need a full service cafe. We think we need a catering kitchen um, and concessions. But given the development that the site is in, there should be local restaurants that are within walking distance, and we kind of want to promote that. So rather not turn it into a food service house, because that's a whole other operation. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Concessions and catering kitchen, two completely different yeah. things. No, no overlap. Um, and catering kitchen should be wherever the big public space is, right. you know, the party room, the reception room, whatever and concessions need to be close to the theater lobby. And the theater lobby shouldn't be used for anything other than theater lobby. 
and, well, and you shouldn't anticipate like, well, I mean, non-performance times is one thing, but right. during performance times, right. lobby is for nothing but theater goers. No, understood. But I think the lobby could, it could service other rental capacity um, if it's designed correctly. Okay. No, this actually is in front of house, but it uh, reminded me of something we were talking about. Um, in the back of house, or uh, maybe a, a canteen with vending machines and that sort of thing uh, for breaks during long rehearsals. That's a quick question. In this discussion, are we should we be assuming that center stage goes away or it stays here? No. It, stays. it stays here. So we have we have the stage that you described earlier today, and we'll have it tomorrow. So we probably I mean it's it will stay. Right. So we probably are saying we shouldn't build something identical because right. we already have it. We have a two sixty. So. Stage, right, right. I want to make sure I understand. Right, so we're kind of almost doubling it and teching it out like crazy. I don't know how much it's maybe a little bit bigger fly, but is that, is that everyone on the same page with that? Okay, sorry. So again, my point is just, again, if this current space works for someone's needs, they don't have to assume they have to leave it so that they Oh my gosh, I'll be in a space that's much too big for me, or I'll be in a space that's something else. If they have a space that works, it will continue to work. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Perfectly good point. Yeah, and I don't think it's, is it over, is it over booked? It's over demanded. Okay, well then that's a good point. Never yeah. done over demanded. Okay. When we, are, when we were not doing pandemics, yeah. You asked about other spaces, a good stage door, separate special entrance. Yeah. And security yep. at the stage door, etc. Yeah. Okay. I think we have one more. Okay. This is kind of a lot, um, but this is all the other things that we didn't already catch. Um, acoustics. We should talk about acoustics for one <coughs> split second. Um, how do you feel about um, go ahead, go ahead. about unamplified performance? In other words, you would design the space so you don't need amplification. Think Strathmore. Have you, have you guys ever been to Strathmore where they turn off the speakers? It's spectacular, right? So, I mean, that's 2,000 seats, but at any rate, I think it's. Uh, I think it should be natural. Yeah. Um, I think you should have accommodation for both. Right. But it should be able to be uh, natural for orchestras, choruses. Um, and I'm going to go way specialized here. But um, I do think it should have adjustable acoustic um, that can change. Now, um, recital halls and concert halls have this uh, feature with curtains, with right. the panels. Right. Uh, I'm not just talking about lowering something down out of the boom to, to reflect the sound, but I mean actually literally changing the surface of the wall, right. uh, how, how <laughs> sound bounces. Um, I think the, uh, the the shape should be one that does not have uh, angles in it smaller than 90. Right. Actually, they should all be angles bigger than 90 or semicircular or right. where sound can really uh, live. Uh, have you thought about grand piano storage? Okay. Uh, things like that. Um, and then I'm going to say this because it's highly specialized, but you never know who comes through with money who might want to do something, but you should probably provide for an organ. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. I mean, you never know who's going to come through with something, but to have it ready and not and not be something, well, we can't put an organ in because yeah. we don't have. How many folks would use an organ if there was an organ? I'm just curious. 
Yeah. Well, there's new there's new stuff. Yeah. There's uh, accompanied silent film. There's uh, orchestra and organ. There's chorus and organ. And you can also use organ if you don't have a budget for an orchestra. You can also accompany opera. You can accompany dance. You can accompany theater with organ if you don't have money for an orchestra. So I'm just saying no, it's a yeah. thought but, and maybe prepare for it. Yeah, you could leave space for the donor who's going to bring out yeah, That's right. <laughs> No, that's terrific, and uh, the unamplified sort of acoustic performances, I think would be, you know, since it'd be an intimate size um, venue, I think it would be really attractive. Obviously, we need amplified uh, performances, but the adjustable acoustics that he's talking about, it doesn't come free, you know? You'd have to work it into the design of the walls of the hall, the ceiling of the hall, and, and, and it would be part of the venue if it's an important feature, so that's why we ask. Um, Obviously, I think streaming capacity is kind of a no-brainer these days, um, and video and, and that. Um, the natural light question really wasn't related to the performance venue. It was really related to everything else. Um, I don't think we really need it in the performance venue. Um, technical aspects. This is a question about um, who's running the tech, and is the operator it, the assumption is there's an operator whenever you would come to rent the hall and they would be running the tech for you rather than a user like running it. Now there might be some small rehearsal spaces where you have to go in and it's so easy to use that you can do it yourself, right? So that's kind of a conversation. Any thoughts on tech since we were hot on tech earlier? <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah, well you need both um, basically. I mean, no typical local group can afford to pay everybody backstage. Yeah, yeah. So you need need your basically your professional techs and the equipment is going to make a difference. Um, you need if you're going to have a live system, you need people who know what they're doing. Right. You, you know, can't just much, play right? anybody. But just stage hands pushing furniture around, that could be the local renting group. Right. It's more a question of like if you went into a rehearsal space, you could tech it out so that you could do it yourself. You know, the, the equipment could be so user friendly that you don't need somebody. That's typically what oh. we would consider. Right. But would there be an option if it was going to be, say, a simple performance, didn't need a lot of uh, varying lighting or sound, that they could be presets, lighting presets, oh, sure. or sound presets, so that you don't need those. I think you'd still need someone to run it, but you could certainly have. I would think the house itself would probably already have presets set up, right? I think there'd always have to be um, professional technical staff on site to oversee it. I don't see the um, group users actually running the equipment because it does get, it might be simple to just hit a preset button, but it's complicated and if you hit the wrong button and programming gets messed up. <laughs> yeah, they're probably not gonna let you touch it anyways, right? It's better to have professional staff I think we were thinking maybe in, the, in the, maybe in the alternate venues, like if there was this sort of, you know, club venue or whatever that might have some. Or if they go through training, you know, yeah. training program. Sorry, keep going. Um, sensory friendly spaces. Uh, on that, you know, with the sensory friendly spaces, yeah, a space where you can adjust the lighting, uh, where you can adjust the sound levels, or that you can have a room where a family can go to take a child or an adult who is overstimulated by a lot of sound, but they can still watch the performance. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but I think most of us, when we've done sensory friendly, we don't have permanent spaces for that. We do performances that are sensory friendly, and a space that might be used for something else becomes this right. room that they go to. So I don't think we need dedicated spaces. Right. Right. But just to be able to make those accommodations in those spaces. Okay. Uh, outdoor performing spaces? You should yes. go ahead, no? Who would say there. no to an outdoor performing space? Not oh. there. How about on the roof? 
a silly question. Is that something that's visible only from when you're up there? It's not something visible from down below? Who knows? We don't know. It's not designed. Oh, now it's getting sight. <laughs> the outdoor Thank space. You. The outdoor space, I mean, does it fit on the site? But who knows? So maybe there's a space on the ground level that you could still carve something out. The question was how much was a need. It doesn't sound like there's a huge need. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I do think that the I do think that outdoor space is a great idea, especially if it's a smaller outdoor space, because that does get to be you know, equity and, and diversity. I mean, there are some groups or performances yep. that, where they're not gonna fill a big theater space, but that would be perfect for them. Yep. So I, I do think it's a great idea. To <laughs> and if you sell out the house, you could live stream it to the outdoor space. Sell like 50 more tickets. <laughs> just making this up. Outdoor performance is just bring different uh, experience for the audience. It truly is, and it's a different experience for the artist to perform too. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Other, there's a, other input. I'm sure there's a million things we missed, um, but we are getting close. And then there's more questions about diversity. Obviously, will be fully accessible and even more than fully accessible. Um, equitable is is a big a big picture and human scaled. Um, any comments on all those? Any ideas of ways that we can um, encourage that even more so than what was discussed? I mean, the, the point about outdoor space can make the facility and experience more equitable is a great point, especially for groups that, you know, maybe they have a sort of ATV team or something and it allows everybody to participate or weekend recitals or something. But any other um, types of spaces, maybe, I don't know, carving out space in the lobby or any other thoughts? Um, I'm thinking of one outdoor space we have already. That's in the town center on the south end. Nice venue for summer concerts and so forth. Nice, it's just a, not, not a competing thing, but another space where, where it's actually, there's less noise around there except yeah, for the right. walking yeah. and so forth. But uh, actually that's more ideal than something, <coughs> you know, all four sides, busy busy highway. Yeah, and so maybe that's it's a low idea. priority, you know, yeah. I mean, if, if it happens to yeah. work. The roof will have a lot of issues wanting some sort of sustainability, solar panels and green roofs, and so the roofs these days become a big oh, item yeah. for sustainability. To the point of uh, an equity space this smaller, we could accommodate that in other ways inside the building. You know, I mean, if it is possible, many places have a big rehearsal room, but they also open it to a small performance. You sure. know, and so some of the inside spaces could be used to address some of those other groups who don't have the following and probably don't have the money to use right. the theater. That's a huge consideration. Right. So there are some performances that do do better in an outdoor space, like street dance and things like that. And so if you have street dancers and you have kind of a funky alternative yeah. space, then you, know, you get an opportunity to collaborate in ways that you wouldn't otherwise. So it's just sure. good to keep it in mind. Nice, thank you. Good point. Thank you. 
one message that we need to be sending here is that this is not just a rest and facility. It's not Thank just you. for rest and performing arts groups. For that reason, I I would not recommend naming it the Rest and Arts Center. I think that's fine as a working title. Uh, and, and it may end up being named after a company that Donate. puts up a lot of money. Right, uh, what's your last name? But, Couple million. But another possibility is to name it after Bob Simon, who founded Reston. And he really founded the community on the principles of equity and diversity. You know, yeah. everything that we want to be is in his name. Good point. Great point. Great point. Oh, uh, this is a backtrack. Can the proscenium be lowered and raised and to be like, because you know, concert halls are just straight stage, straight out the audience, uh, with no, with no opening. Uh, Correct. The Correct. reason I say that is because you know, again, acoustics and all. But uh, I'm just curious if that's something that. I think the hard, the hard, you know, top of the proscenium is fixed, and if you need to lower it, you need to do it with a scrim or some kind of curtain, typically. But you don't pick that height lightly. You pick it for exactly your reason. Or if you have to put, you know, reflectors in for the same, say for a shell, you would align it with that, and you'd have some more that go out okay. into the four stage. Like I think there's a lot that would go into exactly that height, because the higher you make it, the higher the fly has to be. Like it's right. just a lot, you know. Um, so it, your your point is to um, be careful to not make it too hot. Well, the point is a, a lot of sound from anybody behind the proscenium right. gets trapped. Exactly. Um, that's why concert halls don't have them. So exactly. just curious about acoustics and that right. kind of thing. Just, right. Just I mean, to be made aware. Got it. Um, but I appreciate your thought on that. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Trap the sound. That's why. Yeah. I was just wondering when you would when do you address the equipment? the specifications on the equipment, you know, fly system and oh, so forth. That's probably way down. Yeah, <laughs> design development, kind of. And parking, is there anything there? Parking, well, that's, parking, that's yeah, something yeah. we haven't talked about. That's <laughs> no, parking. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. No. Parking is a, probably outside of this conversation tonight. Always a challenge. Well, I just wanted to say uh, an overview I think the most important thing that has come out of our meeting tonight is just build the thing. Exactly. I think. Are you the one who said that last two weeks ago? Yeah, I like that comment. Just get, on, just get on with it. Say it, say it again. <laughs> repeats for emphasis. <laughs> one more comment. I was curious. Who's the decision maker here? Fairfax County, Boston Properties? Who gets to decide these things? It's not us. <laughs> well, not the architects, um, but. Who gets to decide these who's things? Who's the client? Who's the owner? All the side. Great question. <laughs> Great I think question. it's a combination of people, and I think this feasibility study will help everyone understand, you know, what the ramifications is. We're going to come up with a, with a cost. You know, that's going to weigh into the whole thing, right? And the market's crazy, so that's going to, you know, define. Who gets to decide? Um, it's a combination. You mean the program, or or if it goes forward? Decision makers. Your final decision maker. Mark. Of course. Oh. Right. Ooh. That's not clear. Uh, well, DPW ES is, is the client. You know, the Department of Public Works is the client. So, at the moment. So, there. I will speak. <laughs> so the the proffer is a proffer as a function of the development of Reston Town Center from Boston Properties. Fairfax County government has to respond to the proffer. This study is designed to help us understand what the program might be, the function might be, and what the relative order of magnitude of cost might be. Until that's known, the county can't respond intelligently to the proper opportunity. So the, the long answer is there's no decision maker per se. There are a series of activities that will lead to some series of decisions. See, it was an easy answer. But ultimately, there's a decision. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> 
Um, we just want to be respectful of everyone's time. We can stay after for a few minutes, but it is 8 o'clock. And obviously today we, we took a deeper dive into talking about some of the um, preferences, needs, priorities related to performing arts. As we mentioned, in two weeks, on March 14th, we'll be back here in this in this room, right? Next room. And uh, talk about visual arts. So it's all a balance of competing interests or uh, not competing necessarily, but synchronistic uh, interests. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, talk about visual arts also and make sure we understand what spaces they absolutely need, what we can share. Uh, and then on March 28th, we'll be talking about a focus group that relates more with arts education schools, equity, opportunity. So um, you're welcome to keep coming back to those meetings. We'd love to see you come back and continue to add your voice and to talk with the other use groups. Um, you know, the more that we can continue to talk about this, we can right size all of these program elements. And then on Monday, April 4th, which is one week after the March 28th, will be a general wrap up. Um, and that those last two meetings will be on Zoom. So uh, next week is our last in-person meeting, oh, and uh, we'll be talking visual arts. And uh, yeah, for that, nice oh, again, if you have other questions, comments, you want to be, you know, absolutely reiterate, you know, just build this thing, or you still have questions about who the decision makers are, feel free to email that um, to rccontact at fairfaxcounty.gov. Um, check out the website. Uh, this meeting is recorded, just like all the meetings will be. Um, here in person, but when we have the Zoom platform, those will be recorded and they're posted up on the website. So the website will also have any updates. We don't anticipate any of these meetings changing. These meetings were set um, for a while and are being advertised. So we, again, if you if you know friends or, or people that, that weren't able to come tonight and, and you'd like them to come, have them come to another meeting. Um, you know, even though we're talking about visual arts, maybe there's a way we can continue a conversation if, if they weren't able to come to these last two meetings. We'd love to hear, especially if they represent a group that, that just hasn't been able to share their voice. Yeah. So thank you very much. We really appreciate all of your time. And um, you know, we'll continue the conversation in two weeks. So thank you. Thank you. Well done.